Guess what, guys? We are live. This is looking a little not fabulous, but that's okay. It's my Johnny Carson background. All right, y'all. I'm waiting for you guys to join the stream. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a conversation as soon as you guys realize I'm live. What's up? Uh, all right. So thought I would talk about fatty liver, it's the liver and keto and keto carnivore, standard keto and keto carnivore. Because a lot of people think that if you have fatty liver, which a lot of you guys do, um, well, you guys have a sluggish liver. A lot of you guys have a sluggish liver. You're not like bona fide, you know, diagnosed as uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease people. But it's very interesting to understand the concept about the liver when you're trying to do these diets. Now, and don't forget to like up the stream, guys. So here's the deal. People think, what's up, Jessica? People think that um, that doing a high fat diet, either if it's a low carb high fat or standard keto with a high fat or keto carnivore with high fat, is going to leave fatty deposits in the liver, which is ridiculous and stupid, horrible that people would think that. So I've been doing this for almost 12 years. You guys know that I am 51 going on 52. Holla. And um, it's just the most amazing thing that I've ever experienced or chosen to take on as a part of my life for the rest of my life is to be ketotic. Now, with that said, you are never, ever, ever 100% just using ketones. You will also always use when you're doing one of these ketogenic protocols, you will always use ketones and glucose. You see, I do had it fatty liver went away, went from 305 to two. Okay. So here's somebody who did keto. I assume who uh, had a fatty liver, but then her fatty liver uh, went away. So the things that actually create a fatty liver or a sluggish liver are crazy stuff like coming from the carb world and eating a lot of high carbohydrate diets because you you know in the bodybuilder community people are like yeah i pound down 600 grams of carbohydrates now that's a really good way to create a sluggish or fatty liver now also fructose is another really big problem so i do not understand these fruititarians they're eating a ton of tons of fruit because the fruit has been genetically altered it's been hybridized selectively bred genetically modified to have more fructose to make it more palatable and though then we will start putting out the the dollar dollar bills on it and so uh your body does not does not need insulin to get that fructose in the liver it just goes right there and this is a big reason why people are developing a sluggish liver who are eating a lot of fruit now don't get me wrong High insulin and high glucose, all of that stuff has to go to the liver. Everything does. So other things you want to consider are is smoking, alcohol, uh, caffeine, medication, supplements, uh, pesticides, and like like deodorant and and uh, and skincare stuff that has a lot of chemicals in it that just go right there. Uh, other things are stress. So your liver can get very sluggish with stress and um, birth control pills and other things that people do. Um, the, the S stuff that guys take, right? Um, to um, get bigger muscle. Those things all have to go filter through the liver. So the liver is an organ that's not going to get fatty on a ketogenic diet, actually a ketogenic diet will actually sort of, uh, how do we say this? If you have stones caught in your biliary system, if you have a sluggish liver, it will de-stone and de-slugify, like my medical terms. Uh, the, the, uh, the action of the liver. 
So I'm just kind of doing a quick stream because there are certain things that people are afraid of. Now, people think, and I tested this, and I still need to test it more. Uh, people trying to make ketones with an already diagnosed fatty liver, non-alcoholic or alcoholic or uh, sluggish liver or elevated liver enzymes. Uh, it's very interesting to um, see if they make ketones and they do. So I'm on the fence here if people are having a hard time to adapt with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or sluggish liver um, because so far so good, right? So far so good people with this disorder of the liver or liver disease seem to be making ketones just fine but i definitely think that i need to do more research not with what's out there because keto is so new but with my clients the people that i actually work with okay so i'm going to take you guys these questions and concerns and then bounce but what i find quite interesting about the liver and people with candida people with the parasites and um if that liver is sluggish right and you guys are trying to to get rid of the parasites and the fungal infections. You're not gonna get rid of these infections unless that liver is running well. Now, keto or keto carnivore um, is a good strategy to help the liver begin to heal itself and repair itself and function and detoxify more properly. And these questions I'll have to get after because I am used to high blood pressure from my car. Um, from high carbs. Okay, I'll go into that in a second. Struggling with, okay, so this is blood pressure. So I'll talk about blood pressure too, which is also very interesting, which I've been reading that if the liver isn't functioning properly, that blood, uh, that the liver and high blood pressure are connected, right? So it's beyond, again, the smoking and the alcohol and the chemicals and the pesticides and the calcification and the calcium deposits. It's in being nutrient deficient. So that liver is very, very important that it works properly and also to, have to get that liver to work properly, people do things like cleanses or flushes to that biliary system. Uh, people use things like uh, I think choline and liver and the herbs are uh, turmeric and milk thistle and one more. Turmeric, milk thistle and dandelion. And they're quite effective, but the, you know, if you guys are having issues with plants and you're reacting to these herbs, which some people do, then perhaps you may not be able to use, especially if you're on carnivore and you're trying to get your liver to function more properly, then organ meats would be the best way, the best strategy to get this sleep, lack of stress, and get rid of all the toxins. That is the best way to get that liver to function properly. So it's something that I wanted to address in a quick stream about people's fear that uh, being in ketosis and eating all that fat would create a fatty liver when actually it's quite the opposite. It will actually help heal the liver so it functions more properly. Now with that said, I am going to take some of your guys' as cues, your guys' as cues, and bounce with it. After this, I'm going to go to my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic, and go live there. And you guys know I run a course, I, I teach everything now. I teach low carb, high fat. I teach how to in integrate low carb, high fat into your diet, like the timing of your foods, the amount pre post workout, um, people with hypoglycemia, people with thyroid and all this kind of stuff. Then we've got uh, the, um, da, 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 da. we've got the standard keto, and we've got the keto carnivore. And so if you guys really need to dial it in with that, injuring yourself because people always try to to fast and they're not understanding that fasting which is another very interesting concept that if you fast too long i've been reading that that could actually create stress on the liver so we always think like if you're fasting that you can detoxify the liver but really if there's stress if there's cortisol cortisol is another thing adrenal issues uh will all, are also problematic with the liver and also i believe that the liver lack of good liver function is connected to fibroids, endometriosis, polycystic ovarian syndrome, because it's hormones, right? That's right, another more stuff is coming to my mind. Obviously, you guys, I'm not reading off a script. This is all coming from in here, from here. So um, uh, estrogen is a problem. It can get trapped in that biliary system and help to contribute to the stones in the liver, kidney, and the gallbladder. 
So that has to something has to something that has something to do with the uh, oral contraceptives that women are taking or that men are taking now women too that are into bodybuilding on um, so when you have endocrine issues that also is uh impacting like it, i guess it's sort of like a loop that if the liver is not detoxifying properly then then these hormones are getting trapped into the liver and really just screwing up your body beyond measure and catering to possible liver disease so with that said now i'm going to take you guys cues and just know that i don't know i'm really excited about the future and the amount of stuff that i'm learning that i can give you guys and i work with people on my course group i do consultations so don't forget that i do consultations where i talk to you guys one-on-one -on -one. and um yeah it's all good so you just go to stephanieperson.com if you want to join my keto course membership or the uh one-on-one -on -one consultations i'm gonna take your guys' questions and then so here we go. This is, do you think keto carnivore would help heal autoimmune, of course, disease? I've been diagnosed with, was it le lechen or le lichen? Cirrhosis, oh goodness, yeah. So I don't know what your symptoms are. I don't know how long you've been diagnosed with this. So I think those things also play a role, but absolutely, I think that getting your insulin in check, getting your stress in check, getting your hormones in check, your sleep in check will help this cirrhosis that you have of the liver. This type of cirrhosis, which I've never heard of. Let me see. It's 2 a.m. here. Aww. It's too late. Can't sleep. Glad I came onto YouTube to watch you, Steffi. Ah, thank you. You look good. Thank you. Let's see here. Uh, do you think keto... Oh, I already read that. A heal... Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Autoimmune. So autoimmune. How did you develop this autoimmunity? That also plays a role. Uh, can under eating protein be another cause for hair loss? No. Um, one of the main causes for hair loss is your thyroid, underactive thyroid. So that also is connected to the liver. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, very closely connected to the liver function. Yeah. Uh, hair falling out. There's three main reasons why. The main one, your hair falls out is because, or four, because of uh, your thyroid uh, dysfunction. Another one is iron deficiency. Another one is things like plaque psoriasis and candida of the scalp and alopecia. Wait, one, one more. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, uh, calcium deposits in the, in the hair follicle. Let me see, where do you get most of your meats at? In a store or online? Both. So both I've gotten from U.S. Wellness Meats and Butcher Box. And uh, then there's, I live in Kelly. So we've got uh, farmer's markets on Sundays. And we have like, you know, independent markets like Air One and uh, what's another one? Sprouts? No, more Air One. Yeah. And then Whole Foods. Let's see, uh, let's see. Hi, Steph. You guys are asking away, that's what's up. Hi, Steph, I have a good stool question. I'm down to, what, pan frying. What? Some only saw is my stool, what floats? Oh, uh, stool floating has two reasons. Either leaky gut or your gallbladder. So, and that's not a good, that's another thing with, uh, when you have leaky gut, because that's also connected to the liver, now that I'm remembering all this stuff. So if you're not absorbing your B6, if you're not absorbing your fat salt, vitamin D, E, A, K, then that also creates a dysfunction to the liver. So um, uh, you're still floating means that you're not absorbing your uh, vitamins, and that's a tragedy. It's hard to adapt when your stool is floating. Let's see here. What are the th what are your thoughts on long term garbage intermittent fasting? Just one meal. Like, why would you do that? Okay, I don't understand you guys. I I don't. Is it Pioneer Toy? The thing that I find very bizarre is that why would you have food deprivation? Like, what's the reason why you want to intermittent fast? 
So that's the main concern because a lot of you guys have body dysmorphia and you're using like people are doing the HG diets, right? These diets, um, they, they were doing these diets in the past to lose weight um, and taking prenatal vitamins and eating 500 calories a day. And now what's replaced that, which is almost the same thing as food deprivation, which is the intermittent fasting. And I always say there's nothing, absolutely zero wrong with fasting. If you don't have hypoglycemia, thyroid condition, or, and do nothing. Fast, do nothing. Fast and rest. But people don't just fast for three days. They just keep doing it until they think they're going to get lean and it's a hot mess. It totally messes with your endocrine system. Okay, what are your, let me see, long-term fasting. Like I said, so there is information that long-term fasting creates a, a, a dysfunctional liver. It's hard on the liver. Let's see, do you know of good, a good brand of smoked oyster? No, I don't, not at all. That's one I don't know. Let's see if I go back to some of these questions. I do have fatty liver. I went, to, I went away from losing weight. Yes, of course, the other thing that contributes to fatty liver is visceral fat from being overweight, just sucking up right into the liver, into your organs, into your arteries. Thank you. What is it? C C E T R. Thank you. I'm a new subscriber. Are you, are you are awesome and right on target. I'm watching all of your videos. Thank you for all your knowledge. Thank you, Roxanne Davidson. Okay, still no hot flashes since doing keto. Awesome. <laughs> Boom, that's what's up. Tangela Adams. Uh, I used to have high blood pressure from high high carb diet. Now months on keto struggling with blood pressure. I think I eat enough salt. Oh, you have low blood pressure. Is low potassium correlated with low blood pressure or just salt? Um, a lot of people like on a ketogenic protocol, um, <laughs> there's a lot of things like, oh, that's another thing with the liver problem. You guys have a problem with the lymph system and you need to move, right, to get that liver to, to function properly. And that's sort of the same thing with people who go from high blood pressure to low blood pressure. So you have to get your lymphatic system moving. You have to walk. You have to move the body. A lot of people don't move and they develop issues. Um, people uh, do not have their potassium, sodium, magnesium, water balance correct. They don't drink enough water or, the, or they'll drink too much water or they will have a lot of salt, salt and not enough potassium rich foods. And this might create an electrolyte issue and therefore a low blood pressure. But that's normally people with low blood pressure tend to have it genetically and they just tend to have to mind their salt and water intake. But you went from high to low, which I've never heard of. So, you know, all I can say is just to get your electrolyte balance, in balance, in check. Of course, I can't see what I'm doing and I'm dumping a whole thing of water all over my face. Nope, Deb's not here and that's okay because we don't really have any trolls today, so that's all right. Uh, is Zena Hardy? Um, I would say for people who've got, especially who've got uh, um, men and women, uh, I would say to, first of all, to keep your lymphatic system moving to sleep well, to eat well, don't eat foods that help heal that gut wall um, get your natural glutathione production going for fabulous hair, but really things like biotin is really good foods high in biotin, which would be liver. And also, um, uh, I would use for any people who've got thyroid issues or hair thinning, try, um, they have like little brushes that like rub the scalp to get blood flow to the follicle and also glucose, uh, like diabetes can also kill the follicle. Um, and also use castor oil, especially, especially Jamaican castor oil, and then rub it into your scalp to get that hair nice and fabulous. Okay, is it dangerous to up your fats when you aren't absorbing them well? No, it's not dangerous. It's not dangerous. Like your body will have a cutoff 
It's not like I just sit and eat tubs of fat all day. Um, no, it's not dangerous. The problem with, let me look that, make sure that question. Um, a lot of people I know ha are malabsorptive, either through leaky gut or through, through gallbladder. So they would use things like ox bile salt, which is salt, salt, salts from a bovine ox moo, um, or a BT and HCL to help, you know, that's got some, some things like some digestive enzymes to help your uh, lipase and proteolase to get down that fat and protein and to eat, eat uh, take the, I'm not a supplement person, but these are all, all designed to take on the short term if you still have a gallbladder, because if you don't, you might take ox bile longer and this will help you uh, absorb and digest those fats better. So no, you, there's, there's strategies and eat your food incredibly slow if you're eating a high fat diet and eat it slow. We, we slam the food down and we do a bunch of butter butter in a tea and if you're having a hard time digesting it you gotta like eat it with protein to help digest it more can you heal your liver doing keto while still drinking alcohol once a week no if you've got non if you got alcoholic uh if you got cirrhosis of the liver or if you got a uh, liver sluggish liver from drinking why would you drink anymore just in general and then if you have um if you have non-alcoholic liver disease and you want to drink once a week, why would you even do, I don't understand. I'm sorry, call me naive or stupid, but I don't understand why you would even dread jeopardy. I mean, alcohol is a freaking poison, guys. You got to find new ways to entertain yourself. It doesn't have to be video, video games or alcohol. Do we got any more questions? You guys don't forget to like up the stream. So to do that, first of all, I don't see, I don't watch who likes. So if you like it up, it just helps bring people more to my uh, channel, which people aren't getting their notifications. For as many uh, subscribers that I have, a lot of you guys don't see that I go live. So don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and uh, to, to hit the like button because and it's at the bottom, I think it's one of the icons. So you hit the like and then you hit the chat to, to uh, re-enter the chat or the stream. Okay. Yes. Who says to like up the stream? Tatiana says like up the stream. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Super funny mo, mo salts. Huh? What? What you, what you say? What? 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 Okay. Uh, I've been keto for two years. My testosterone is high, yet above the reference range. Should I be concerned? Dan, um, I don't know that, the answer to that. Um, I don't know what type of testosterone. I don't know if it's your dehydrous testosterone, your total testosterone, your free testosterone. I don't know. So I couldn't tell you because you aren't giving me more information. What? 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 So do we have any more questions on in the house? Y'all are quiet today. What's going on on this Monday? I walk outside in LA and there's traffic everywhere and on my stream it's just very quiet. Um, can you talk a little bit more, wait, a little more about the pros and cons of cooking with what? Lemons and limes? Whitney, I never talked about that there was a disadvantage. Um, what I can say about lemons and limes is that people sometimes it's on the histamine list so if you have leaky gut and you pound down the lemon you potentially could be having this release of histamine that you can't clear but if you don't have that problem then plant pectins which is also good for the liver apple cider vinegar which can also create a histamine reaction in some people uh and some and when i say some people don't like people are like saying on the comments on the replay you said that I can't do apple cider vinegar, vinegar, and then you said I can't. I'm like, I said some people. Some people with histamine issues. So it has plant pectins that help also detoxify and pull out some of that estrogen out of that liver. Somehow I'm still connecting it to the liver. Fabulous people. Fabulous. Um, let me see are you able to see my question uh no write it again i think i missed it let me see uh snake juice diet is that about fasting to get you to, to get, first of all fasting does not get you into ketosis 
That's some airy fairy stupid word that people keep using. Nobody knows what that means except for Stephanie, right? Because I've been working with people over the years, thousands of people over the years with a glucometer. If your blood sugar is high and your ketones are low and you feel like crap, and just because it's over a zero, it's like a 0 0.8, you are not ketotic at all. You're still a glucose burner and you're gonna be tired and I'll put stress here and there. So don't do this snake diet garbage. Don't do all this fasting. It's so bad for you guys. And everybody does it because they are trying to freaking get lean. But what happens to all these fasters? <clears throat> like my uh, client, she, I had a consultation with her the other day. Her husband started fasting. He, she's like, oh, you know, he says, I feel so much better because he doesn't want to do keto. He still wants to eat his carbs, but then just not eat breakfast and like go most of the day without eating and still drink his coffee. And she's like, He's, he's getting dark circles under his eyes, his skin's starting to get droopy, and he's not feeling well, but he denies it all because he doesn't want to do keto. He wants to just fast, but then still have his bad food. Hope we're doing, oh, ten, they were so funny. Somebody's like, where's Deborah? I'm like, she good, she's just doing her life. And also, uh, uh, we, have, we, we haven't had any trolls, not yet. Uh, can I take potassium chloride powder? Uh, I wouldn't suggest that's really hard on the liver and kidneys, especially the kidneys. May a woman embrace her, wait, may a woman embrace her natural beauty and feel comfort, comfort of unconditional love, keto all the way. Yes. Yes, we should embrace our natural beauty on the inside with our inside health, with our inside character and to the outside. Uh, is sodium more important than potassium? I struggle to reach. No, they're, they're exactly both the same. If you have too much sodium without potassium, you swell up like a balloon. If you have too much potassium without sodium, you swell up like a balloon. So they have to work together. Just like copper and zinc. Uh, I love keto because I have so much energy on carbs and I'm always, huh? Oh, you love keto because you have so much energy because on carbs, you're, you're always tired. Got it. Um, are there any fats or oils that you use that you use or recommend that are not necessarily from animal? Well, I mean, there's always olive oil and uh, avocado oil, but I mean, they're great monounsaturated source of fat, but I mean cook with them on low temperatures. If you have a salad like four times a year, you know. Some people have got histamine intolerance so bad, they can't deal with butter, they can't deal with lard, and they can't deal with tallow. So I have them rotate some of the animal fats with a little bit of uh, olive oil or avocado oil, depending on their allergy. I love keto because I have so much energy on, uh, oh, I already read that. Wait, oh yeah, let's like up this. Yeah, thank you, Deborah. Deborah's like, y'all need to like up this stream. There's 66 people in this live stream and only 34 likes. So if you guys don't mind liking up this stream, because I am trying my hardest. I am not scripted. I don't have any freaking papers in front of me. This is all coming from inside. Okay, hi, Steph. I am three months off uh, Adderall and caffeine, struggling with depression. Energy should I allow myself? A nap on the weekend until my adrenal sale. Of course, of course, yes, yes. There's a lot of things you have to breathe, you have to exercise, but you have to exercise so moder moderately as to not overstress the adrenal glands. You have to have a straight uh, pot, you have to work on your posture. That's another thing that's problem with the liver, that if you guys are like this and you're slouched over and your body gets into the C shape, that really makes it difficult for the liver to function properly. That's another one I forgot to put on my course, in my course, because today's lesson was about the liver. So if you guys want to go and sign up for my keto low carb high fat or keto carnivore course, which is the cheapest one you'll ever find, you would go to stephanieperson.com for that. And also the consultation to you guys at stephanieperson.com. And I'm about to bounce over to Instagram very soon. It's Stephanie Ketogenic. Let's see here. I've been using duck fat and olive oil. I, wait, I found butter messes with my gut now. 
You should probably try tallow and lard first because duck fat tends to be an omega-6 and we don't want a high omega-6 because the fats are really high and coconut oil is not a ketogenic fat. Olive oil is, but still is not the best as animal fat. Uh, you're welcome, Shelly. Okay, Shelly, I took a Adderall for, for 10 years and keto got me up. And also just like, you know, just make sure you have good gut health because you guys, you know that the medulla, the hypothalamus pituitary, adrenal axis is connected to the gut. So that vagus nerve is going to travel to, to everywhere, the liver, the brain, like everywhere. And, uh, you guys want to make sure that, uh, you fix that leaky gut. Yep. Go girl. No script either. Know it or you don't believe I've been following stuff since 2000. Oh, I've been following me since 2016. Awesome. I've been on for 20 years. Keto, I'm I've been on it for 20 years. Keto got me here. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, so keto is a really great way to heal the adrenals from any type of pharmaceuticals that you were taking in the past. But it's not just keto. It's diaphragmatic breathing. It's the circadian rhythm. It's healing that leaky gut, looking at your stool quality, looking at the way that you breathe, right? That diaphragmatic breathing. And the thing is, like, I've watched other videos where people will say some smart things. I'm like, they're reading something. They have the, they pre prep this, they've read this stuff, and then they are speaking on notes. So some things I read, but most things I try to apply to my clients first before I talk about it and get their response and make those correlations be, uh, with people who've got liver issues. Like I said, people I've been coaching who have a sluggish liver or non alcoholic fatty liver disease they still are producing ketones. It's not something I read, it's something that I've worked with, with people. Uh, have you heard of Kerrygold butter? Have I heard of Kerrygold butter? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> um, Deborah's writing in caps to, sub to subscribe to my uh, fit, uh, uh, course group. Just go to stephanieperson.com. Uh, and she wrote it so you can see all the spelling. How do you know if you have histamine intolerance? Histamine intolerance can come in so many ways. You could have like, you know, you could just get like uh, headaches, uh, bloating, gas, burping, um, rashes, itchy, tired, moody, um, mucus buildup, like seasonal allergy symptoms. Like it's pretty obvious. You don't feel well after you eat certain foods blotchy skin red red skin you don't sleep well okay look carry goal what's your view on every stream people are asking me about this dude would you consider his advice beneficial to follow him okay i'll tell you like this i'm gonna say like this i'm gonna say his name and be fair dr burke if if you go back to his older videos right where he's trying to talk about the adrenal body Dr. Berg has some videos that have great information. Okay, so I'm not going to take that away from him. He has some videos that have great information. But the problem I feel that he gets into is when he contradicts himself. Now, I get it. You can evolve and you can change your ideology. So I'm not going to even fall to met that. But when he starts pushing out all these, all these supplements and buy my products, you can see the cha-ching sound clicking in his ear and then when this is my opinion right this is not fact this is my opinion based on what i've seen and i've had a lot of his clients who've come to me and say i'm not doing well i'm following his keto program and i was like he's doing okay now i can say this for a fact he jumped in on a keto trend without a doubt i've been doing keto for years and i made mistakes in the beginning because first of all there was no information out there and so the programs that I was putting together for, for people still had nuts and cheese and I had it on my site and I did not have enough fat in these people's diets. How do I know this? Because I did it for years to, to understand this, this evolution. So when you come out of nowhere and like you're a ketogenic expert, but you haven't done it before yourself and you know, like his, his information about, he thinks that, uh, uh, that keto can create a fatty liver if the fats are too high. I mean, ridiculous. He pushes out 
cruciferous vegetables for the liver, but at the same time, some of these vegetables have oxalates, which damage the liver. So there's a lot of contradictory information. He uh, is doing the intermittent fasting, but yet he never shows his body. Let's see, are you fasting yourself? Or are you just jumping on a trend? I don't know. Feels like he's jumping on a trend to make some money. His views, he went from X amount of subscribers to a gazillion subscribers when he started talking about weight loss in a female's body. Dude, you're not a woman. For real, that's your audience. His target audience is women in my age group. So that's what I think about him. I think that, you know, with him talking about, you know, certain things and aspects of the body, you know, with the research that he does, and then he does his videos, um, because I, and I haven't really watched this channel enough lately to know this is like, I've worked with clients. This is what I've experienced because I don't hear that in his videos. What I hear, see is clickbait, clickbait, click, intermittent fasting, keto, and he'll probably flip over to carnivore if he thought he could make a dollar off of it. And the thing is, it's like, if you're going to talk about histamine intolerance, then you have to consider oxalates. You're telling people to eat kale shakes, shakes, but kale, kale is a goitrogenic food. So that stuff to me is confusing. It sounds absolutely and utterly contradictory. You know, keto is going to give you fatty liver disease, but actually keto can help. You know, Dr. Westman is like, it helps with the liver. And it makes more sense because the, the fat that you eat dietarily is not going to convert into triglycerides in the liver. Glucose does that and fructose does that. And alcohol and stress and poor sleep and all this, you know, pharmaceuticals and blah, blah, blah. So does that answer your question? Because I've avoided saying his name. Because I, like, he can be online and make his money because he has a right to do that. He has his lane to exist in. He seems like a very nice person. Um, but his contradictory information and all of those supplements, he just is hearing the money train going. And trust me, guys, I could do the exact same thing. I would surpass him making money if I told you guys to follow my 90-day weight loss program. Look what I did because his demographic is me, my age group in my 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s are his main, you know, chicks. So you gotta go on this letter. He said intermittent fasting was that then talks about what he eats for, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I agree with you. Yes, and he also is like talking about eating all these vegetables. You have to have his ideology is, which is so stupid, you have to eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables to keep a healthy liver. But cruciferous vegetables have a lot of oxalates. You know, he's got like green, I think he used to have green drinks or green smoothies or kale shakes. Those things deposit oxalates in your liver. And then the liver is not functioning properly. So it's not the fat that's creating triglycerides in the liver. It's everything else. And because he hasn't like, he hasn't maybe like mimicked other people's stuff yet or found a way to make money off of it, I'm guessing. So don't quote me on it. But that's my opinion of him, and I'm trying not to talk about other people, you know, unless I'm trying to say something like, oh, I love them, you know, but I don't love him, but I don't hate him. I just, I mean, I'm a neutral, but I don't like when people abuse the, because the, I get women who are desperate. They got thyroid issues, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. They've got their universes yanked out, their gallbladders yanked out. And I'm very emotionally connected to all these people, men who've got issues, they've got, they've got low testosterone, they've got high blood pressure. I'm very connected to these people. I, and I don't sell anything. Trust me, you guys, I have companies. I could, if I pumped out all of the emails, which I might do one day, like do split screen so you can see how many people want to partner up with me and do affiliate programs. And I say no to all of them. I would be making so much money had I said yes to all these people over the years but I don't believe in what they're trying to sell, which is like hope in a bottle. And that's where you get in trouble. Mr. Rogers, yeah, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And it's like, people in my generation only know Mr. Rogers. Why don't you beat my neighbor? Okay, uh, oxalates can contribute to kidney stones. Yes, I know from, oh, you know, from experience. So why would you push people to eat nine cups of cruciferous vegetables loaded in and not even say, how do you prepare them? How do you get rid of do you, do you, do you uh do you boil them? Do you pressure cook them? No, just have a bunch of cruciferous vegetables because that's gonna help your liver. And it's actually gonna damage your liver if you get too many oxalates going on. Yeah, yes, thanks. I just followed his advice as he looks very young. What? 
Dude is a couple years younger than me. Are you freaking tripping me? He does not look young for his age. Oh my God. Sorry, no. <laughs> for his age, which is why I follow you and Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who also, she's got a little bit of stuff in there. I don't know, but I just think she's very smart. As you all look very young for your age, sorry for asking. Okay, first of all, sorry. Like, I think he's a lovely person, but I do not think he looks young for his in his 50s. He looks in his 50s, okay? He looks in his 50s. Let's see, Paul Check, right? That's a guy in his 50s who's freaking shredded in a super fit shape. He's not. He buns his shirt up to here. And I don't want to be judging the guy at all, but, you know, show your body. Let's see what you're working with, right? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be judgmental, but if I can't see it, that, that, that leads me to up to the imagination that you got some, you got some saggy pecs and all that mush there. Let's see what you're packing, bruh. He might look young for his age in comparison to really, really sick people in their 50s, but he's just a couple years older than me. No, I'm not even kidding. Uh-uh. What -uh. is <laughs> he? He looks like he needs to eat a steak. He probably does, but I mean, he looks thin, normal, you know, but he don't look like super fit, super healthy, super, let's go. Like, come on, Dr. Burke, come work out with Steph. Let's do a workout together. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, that'd be real, right? Work out with Steph. We're in the same age group. Let's do it. Let's have him follow my diet, the real keto for a freaking month and see how his energy is. Okay, I don't, want, I don't want to trash on the guy. He seems like a very, very nice guy. Like I said, he's got a very calm and sort of nice demeanor about him. Um, and he's not an unattractive man, but he's not super fit at all. Oh, you can't wait for Thursday consultation. Wap, 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 wap. Yep, we're going to have a really good time because I always do because I connect with my people. I don't go... Bing! Oh, time's up. Gotta go here, buy my products, and then you'll be able to keto adapt. No, that's not how we work. Because in them consultations, we go over everything. The other day, this woman said, I said, okay, so I always take notes. And I go, okay, I said, give me, give me, give me some context. Give me some background. Let me know what's going on with you metabolically. She's like, do you want me to start from when I was in my mom's belly? And I said, yeah, let's go there. Let's talk about in utero. Were you breastfed? Were you were, were you inoculated? Like, we went far back. So when I do my consultations, I'm not like, okay, here's your diet, here's your diet, here's your diet. Bye. No. It's way more detailed than that. Ah, uh, he fits. Saw his, what, what? He is fit. I saw his exercise video. I'm sorry. You're tripping. He's not fit. No, that's maybe your version of fit. No, that's not this kind of fit. No, that. Like I said, everything is contextual, right? Maybe, uh, maybe um, if for most people in his age group, he is fit. But um, like my level of fitness, no. Because mm -mm. the 20-something year olds cannot keep up with this girl. No. And I think that when you're a health coach, you need to be at the most optimal health that you can be. So when people say, he's fit, I saw his exercise video, that doesn't mean anything. It just means you saw him exercise. And that's your perception of fit, fit, right? But I've been training people before I was doing keto. I trained people for 16 freaking years, bruh. So it matters. Yeah, no, I'm actually going to go. So my way to move on from him, and I, the reason Tammy, Tammy, I talked about him is because I get asked about him every single stream. And I'm like, I never talk about him or now. And I, if I do, I use code words and all that. And I just want to knock it out that I feel that he is a nice guy. I feel like he's knowledgeable. I feel like he's got some things to give to people, but I don't find him to be in a realm that I personally, you know, and he sells products, but he has a right to do all that. Bless his little heart. He's doing his thing. He's working hard for his money. You know, so that's what I actually truly think about him because I got nothing against that guy. Do you have 200, what, 200 grams of liver once a week or just 30 daily? It's up to you. 
So nobody has a study on liver. Um, there is no recorded cases of liver toxicity from grass-fed liver and vitamin A toxicity. So it's up to you how much you want to eat. Uh, the, uh, was, it, was it Arlene? The, the fat and ratio is the exact same with it, almost the same with keto. So instead of like keto is 85, 50, 80, 15, 5, 80, sorry, 80, 15, 5. So in this case, you would have 85% fat and uh, uh, 5% protein. Yeah. So the macros are almost the same as the ketogenic diet. Okay, guys, I'm going to go over to my Instagram right now and do a quick stream there. Um, I'm trying my hardest to find more, uh, be more visual, viewable, visual, have people find me because, um, because I don't have big, huge productions and scripted and I keep filming from my phone then I get on the low pile and I don't lie and I don't, I don't sell stuff and I don't try to hype anything. I get on the low bottom of the list and I'm aware of it. It's my choice to do this. Uh, so that makes it has, I have to work harder for people to, uh, see that I've got some stuff to share and also question things I say as well. It doesn't matter who it is out there. Question me, question them, question everyone. I'm not the best. Well, actually I am. Let's take that back. Um, but I am not uh, perfect in the sense of that I can't be questioned or, uh, yeah, people question any anything I do, my motives, my ideology, my information, whatever, or my gains, right? The gains. Okay, my liver hurts when I have a meal with a lot of fat in it. I don't know what kind of fat you're eating. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know if you have non-alcoholic fatty, fatty liver disease. Do you know if it's your liver or your gallbladder? Do you know that? That makes a difference. I, have a, I drank a lot of alcohol in my life while doing keto damage my liver more. My liver is unable to cope with. So what I said at the beginning of the stream is I cannot tell you for certain that, that eating high fat will damage your liver. I can say with the people that I've worked with so far with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or sluggish liver have had no problems with their liver. That's all I can tell you. So do you get irritated when people tag you on Instagram in keto conversations? Um, when it's stuff I don't agree with, like keto products and keto junk and intermittent fasting and the wrong information, yes, I hate to be tagged. I hate it. I literally hate it. Like, I don't want to see this. Why am I being tagged to this? But when somebody's like, I'm really just trying to heal my body, I'm trying to do, make the right decisions. Like here's, I'm eating liver for the first time and they tag me in it, then I love it. But when it's like weight loss and, and like products and, and fasting and all this stuff, I hate it. Hate it. Why always when I'm about to end the stream, then people start coming to the stream. Thanks, so. I'll follow you now and stay away from Mr. Mr. You know what? I think in some of his older videos, he has some great information. I'm just uh, impartial to all the keto and fasting crap that comes out of his mouth. That's my opinion. So, but, but he's got a lot of other information, the great information in some of his older vid videos. Um, that's what I think. So you can follow him or not follow him. I don't care. He's whatever. I'm just, people just ask me about him all the time. And I've gotten to trouble with people asking me about other people. And then I will comment. And then that person will have a hissy fit that I've commented about them when I don't really even care. And I wasn't thinking about them that the followers are asking me about these people. Uh, what meats are uh, on a, what meats on a budget? Liver, organ meats, bones. They're always cheaper than like the leaner cuts of meat. Actually, things like chicken, eggs, those are always cheap. You know, sardines, the cheapest. 
uh, eat proactive liver healing foods and fasting too. No, don't fast. Fast is fasting is horrible for your adrenal glands. Period. 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 People always forget to talk. Are you in keto ketosis when you're fasting? Right? Are you producing enough ketones? Is your blood sugar stable even though through you're going through gluconeogenesis? Because if you're not, then you're putting stress on the adrenals. It's just how it is. And your electrolytes. Okay, I had been doing keto carnivore for five months and love life. But the other day I went for in for went for a bone marrow biopsy and the doctor wanted my glucose over it was over 90, so pumped with my what? What? My wanted my glucose over 90, so they pumped me with sugar. Oh, why did they do that? That's bizarre. I don't understand. Okay. Uh, is uh, grass fed better uh, liver better than none? Uh, nope. That's a no. You could do chicken liver, do pasture chicken, because that's cheaper than uh, beef liver. I mean, maybe if you did organic liver, because for the short term, you can't get grass fed, but not organic liver and not just, I eat, I'm injected with hormones and corn liver. No. Because the notification algorithm finally reached your subs. Oh, you're right. Very good point. <sighs> well, it is what it is, you know. I know that if I did more clickbaiting, I would get more uh, people. But I don't know if it's my age, but I just get so bored. It feels so thirsty, right? I feel so thirsty, and I'm like, do I clickbait a little bit more? Or, you know, just to, to drive people in and then get the proper information? Or do I just keep at a slow pace and just be grateful for the people who do follow me? Can you do sprints on a ketogenic diet? Uh, you can if you have good, strong adrenal health. Like, I have a busted knee, so if my knees were jacked, I mean, my knees weren't jacked, then I could do HIIT training here and there. Absolutely. Um, I know I'm not, I am not happy about it. I feel like, uh, like in AA, when you have a relapse and have to start over. Yeah, and too bad, I just don't know enough information. It's really hard to say. Is it, is it okay to slowly, slowly limit the fat so your body uses stored fat and fuel? Why do people think that? Do Look, I use fat as fuel and I do not limit my fats at all, right? So people have this idea that um, it's not just about limiting fats. You have to have keto adapt. That's like, why, why is anybody talking about keto adapting? You have to adapt. You have to get your body to use a lot of ketones, mostly ketones and some glucose, mainly ketones. You want your body to use ketones and you want it to do it very well, right? Without having putting stress on all your systems because of being glycogen depleted and low ketone production or uh, absorption of ketones. And so um, why would you wanna lower your fat unless you're trying to drop weight? But if you lower your fat, you can't just lower your fat, you're gonna drop weight, you also have to exercise. Then you have to make sure they have good adrenal health to exercise. So there's a lot of moving parts. And if you can still remain ketotic and have healthy adrenals and your sleep's on point, your organs are working, you're detoxing, right? You, you are uh, methylating and then you decide to drop your fats and you exercise and everything still remains very balanced and in homeostasis, then yes, you can. Deborah's reminding you guys to book a consultation, just go to stephanieperson.com and she wrote it in caps. Uh, I think they think that after listening to Dr. Nally Westman, who focused more on fatty proteins and carbs under 20 than adding extra fat. But see, people aren't talking about being ketotic and they're not talking about being hypoglycemic and they're not talking about, which a lot of you guys have gut problems, histamine intolerance, thyroid issues, adrenal issues, you have lethargy going on, you have sluggy organs and you don't want to just you sleep is garbage, you do a lot of pharmaceuticals, you have stress like bonanza, and they don't talk about that. They're saying like, no, just, you know, just eat like a little bit less fat and have like protein. And then you're like, you'll be in ketosis. And then I get these people are like, my hair starts falling out more. Why am I still so tired? Like I'm farting all the time and I don't know why. Why? Well, cause somebody told you to eat cheese and some people told you to eat a lot of eggs and all this kind of weird stuff or nuts. Okay, how do you keep weight on with keto tart? 
to do with it. Okay, so I don't know what your macros are. I don't know what you're doing. A lot of people don't have enough macros. So people who are like losing weight and they're like, oh my God, I can't keep weight on. It's because they're actually, their fats are low and their carbs are low. So the diet is low. Uh, so, so uh, even people who have high body fat percentage still need as much. Yes, of course. Your, your body's not going to access fat if your blood sugar is unstable, right? If you have high insulin and high, uh, uh, you're constantly in gluconeogenesis and you're drinking coffee and you're not sleeping and you have a lot of stress and you have poor lymphatic system and then you think that you're going to, you have to eat fat to make ketones. You have to make ketones. You have to train your body over time and months to be able to make ketones and use them before it will access the body fat when you're sleeping. I sound like a little biatch. Sorry. Um, is ghee okay on keto? Yes. Do you start, if you don't have a histamine issue, do you start uh, lowering your carbs to begin with or slowly? Or, um, I think that people should slowly lower them before I'd say like, oh, just do it overnight. And then people are having keto flu and issues on top of issues. So I would graduate from two to five weeks, depending on the severe reactions you have according to the thyroid or the adrenal or uh, hypoglycemia. There are many food options on keto. No, there's many food options on standard keto and there are less options of, there are no vegetable options on keto carnivore. And with that said, guy, you guys, thank you so much for joining the chat. Don't forget to like up this stream. It helps bring people to my freaking chat. Okay. <laughs> What's the best fast to adapt on? Um, if you don't have a histamine intolerance issue, butter. Um, if you don't have an issue with the proteins and eggs, egg yolks, uh, lard and tallow. Best fat, bar none, and meat fats, and liver fat. Um, bacon really what food opinion what at what bacon really what food what i don't get the question sorry Just, have a great evening thank you deborah thank you guys deborah's like girl get off i know i know right okay guys i'm gonna start a stream up on instagram which is stephanie ketogenic and i better keep it short there thank you everyone duck fat is high in omega-6 all bird fats are but you can have it every once in a while because it tastes so fabulous. So fabulous. Okay. All right, guys. Bye. Now I got to go. Yes, and that's Tasha K because she cracked me up. Okay, guys. Bye.